Tulsi Yazagi, and he is a history lecturer at the Alexander Moiso University of Duress. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on uh, the news hour on TRT World. Now, first of all, um, you have actually been to the places um, that the Chinese call, I use their term, re education centers where the Uyghur Muslims are living. What did you see there? Yes, I visited in August uh, the vocational training centers, what the Chinese call them, which in fact are mass detention centers, or some people call them concentration camps. In these uh, so-called schools, <laughs> we were a group of uh, around uh, 17 foreign journalists. And uh, what we found out, we found out that the people whom China is mass incarcerating are innocent people. Their only crime <laughs> that uh, we found, and I have documented through my videos that I published them on my YouTube channel, their crime was that they were Muslim. Uh, what China is doing at present in Xinjiang, under the excuse of fighting uh, terrorism, it has declared Islam an illegal religion, or what they call it, an extremist religion. And in this very moment, if you live in Xinjiang and you are not Han Chinese, but you are a Turkic Muslim, that you speak a Turkic dialect and you believe in Allah, or you possess a Quran and you pray to God, or you read the Quran with your friends, all these actions are considered a crime. Chinese authorities will immediately arrest you, detain you, and send you in these concentration camps. In these camps that China tries to masquerade and show them as being schools, <laughs> the Turkic Muslims are forced to renounce their Turkic identity. They are not allowed to speak Turkish with each other, but they are forced to speak Chinese 24 hours a day. And moreover, they are prohibited to practice their religion. People in these centers, the people that I interviewed, were forced and brainwashed to reject their faith in Islam and to seek uh, forgiveness for, from the Chinese authorities. Why? Because one, two or three years ago, they had read the Quran or some other people had married according to the Islamic tradition by doing a nikah, or some other people uh, wanted to consume halal or kosher food, or some other people, uh, they simply told to their mothers to pray to God. For, for these crimes, which are crimes in Xinjiang, according to the, the extremification regulation, okay. these people had been detained and uh, they were kept in these centers for more than one year. I'll see. I, I want to ask you because, you know, what you're saying is, is really incredible, uh, very, very sad uh, to hear, especially at first hand. Um, and in a recent op-ed, I have it here for a Turkish uh, newspaper, paper, the Daily Sabah, you ask, what can the Muslim world do to save the Uyghurs and Islam in China? I put that question to you again. What can they do? The Muslim world is very important for China. Uh, what China is doing at present with the Uyghur Muslims is part of its uh, Obor or One Road, One Belt initiative or the so-called Silk Road, which is a social imperialist project that China is building across Asia, Africa and Europe. This project, which includes the construction of massive highways, crosses through Xinjiang and goes into Muslim countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, and what have you. Now, what the Muslim world can and should do, they should tell to China, we know that you are a superpower and you are growing and expanding, and we respect that. But if you want to have good relations with us, you should allow the Muslims of East Turkestan to freely practice their religion. You should close the concentration camps, or what they call them, the vocational training uh, centers, if you want us to respect you in the same way. The China should not forcefully uh, uh, assimilate the Turkic Muslims of 
East Turkestan and turn them into Han Chinese, because China would very feel very bad if, let us say, another foreign country or let us say Japan will detain the Chinese and put them into concentration camps okay. and force them to learn and speak Japanese. Well, see, I, I just want to, you know, come back to that question. You know, what can the Muslim world do to save the Uyghurs and Islam in China? Um, you've given some recommendations what you think they should do. Why haven't they done this and do you think they will? Uh, we have some countries like Turkey that have spoken out, but we have uh, some other Muslim countries which are not democracies, but they are dictatorships. And this, uh, especially many Arab dictatorships, they support and supported China for many reasons. Reason number one is China supplies them with weapons and technologies to uh, oppress their own people. Number two is China likes the dictators and it supports them to keep power. Now, what the Muslim world should do is the Muslim world should immediately ask China to grant the right of religious belief to the Uyghurs. We know that we have many dictatorial Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so-called Muslim countries who are not going to do that. But at least we as civil society, intellectuals, professors, people of the media, we should speak up. And okay. even if many Muslim uh, dictatorships, they like what China is doing because they're doing the same thing to their own citizens, at least we should talk and speak out and tell to China, please allow Islam to exist in China. All right. Olsi Yazaji, thanks so much for uh, sharing that first-hand uh, account and also those recommendations. Thank you so much. Olsi Yazaji speaking to us. Thank you.